we need to be praising God this morning. Yeah. 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 We may have been on the other side. Yeah. 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 So, as we continue on through the service, we need y'all to to, to yeah. participate yeah. in bringing the Holy Spirit into this place. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Are we so glad that the Lord says to make a joyful noise? He didn't say make a perfect noise. Y'all know you can crack it all off, keep it everything, but, but it can't come all over. It's all about keeping it perfect. No, no. Amen. So we thank God that we don't have to be perfect. He says to make a joyful noise. Yeah. And I was happy when I said this. I'm sure he was happy to receive it.
when you have no one else to call on, we can call on the name of Jesus. And amen. In the midnight hour, we can call on the name of Jesus. And then when your body is racking with pain, you can call on the name of Jesus. And then when, when that gout set in, and you, and you want to call some other names, and then you can call on the name of Jesus. And in the midnight hour, when you feel tears running down your eyes, you can call on the name of Jesus. And in the midst of sorrow and pain, you can call on the name of Jesus. When your heart is aching from things you are going through because life has decided it wants to lay some extra weight on you, you can call on the name of Jesus. And then when your spouse is not acting right, or kids are disobedient, the dog chew your shoe up, you can call name of Jesus. And then we don't have to wait to call on the good times, we don't have to wait to call on the bad times. The perfect time to call on the name of Jesus is every time you open your mouth. Amen. Call on the name of Jesus. And then we're going to have scripture and prayer this morning. Um, we're going to ask, oh, that's Reverend Tony to come with a scripture this morning. Reverend Tony's going to come with a scripture and ask Pastor uh, Vance to lead us to the throne of grace. And if there are others in the house and you have a favorite scripture you want to read, or if you'd like to pray, uh, this opportunity will be uh, made aside, laid aside for you. So if you have a scripture, you're in the house today, and you want to read the scripture, or if you want to pray, please feel free. Um, while Reverend Tony is coming, good to see our newest converts, newest disciples are in the house this morning.
and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I have read from you that may God have a blessing to the yeah. hearing and the reading and the understanding of his holy word. Coming from Acts 2 and 17 all the way into Acts 2 and 21. Amen. 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 Let us all stand. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is in this place today, no matter what it looks like. Because the Lord is still here. We want to be, we want to bow down in his presence. We want to show him that we love him. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name, Lord, the name of Jesus, Lord. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you for who you are today. Lord, we bless your name, your holy name, your righteous name, because you're worthy, God, you're everything, God. We love you right now, Lord. Come right now, Lord. Forgive us for all our sins, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Make us whole, Lord. Forgive us each and every day. Give us new mercy today, new grace today, Lord. We love you, Lord. We magnify you like a deer that searches for water, Lord, and pants for the water. We pants for you, oh God. Lift our souls up, Lord. Lift our spirits up today, Lord. Help us to see the unseen things. Help us to realize that you live and that you hung, bled, and died on the cross just for us, oh God. Lord, help us to live your word. Yeah. Not just be listeners, but listen to help us to be what we need to be in your word, Lord. Help us to go out and share the word and with, your, with your people in, in the world right now, Lord. But the world is dark, Lord. Take away all the worries and all the fear, Lord. Help us to just worship you more and more each and every day, Lord. Get us in your spirit, Lord. Give us a double portion. Because we need you right now, Lord. We need you. When things are looking, Lord, but you're still in control of everything. You still got to give us the mind of you, oh God. Give us the strength, Lord. Give us the peace, Lord. Heal our aching bodies, Lord. Heal our broken hearts, oh God. Lift us up right now, Lord, because we need you today. Strengthen us with your mighty hand, Lord. Keep your hand on us, Lord. Give us peace, Lord. That the path of all understanding, Lord. Because you're worried. We're worried and, we, and we're just downtrodden, Lord. Touch us right now, Lord. Touch us right now. Give us peace, Lord. Give us the strength. Give us assurance, Lord. Lord let us look for the reward that, we, that you want to have for us today, Lord. We love you, Lord. We praise your almighty name because you're worthy, God. You're everything, God. We thank you for all you're going to do in this church.
dancers and praying, this song came into my spirit. And I want all of us to mess it up together. I mean, I want all of us to lift up a joyful voice to the Lord. You remember the song, Excellent? Amen. If, if, if you don't remember, it will come back to you. So let's just sing it together and just lift up your voices. Whether your notes crack or not, let's just lift praises to God. So the song, Excellent is thy name.
coming from Matthew, the 28th chapter. Yeah. Coming from Matthew, the 28th chapter. And I'd like to start at verse 18. Where it reads, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples all of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So in our three-tier ministry objective, we have uh, teaching, teach them evangelism and worship. And I believe I said I'm out of order. Evangelism being first. The scripture tells us that God has all power. So we're not to rely on our power when we go to evangelize someone. Um, it says, go ye therefore make disciples. So we don't want to rely on our own power to evangelize or to talk to someone about Christ. And that's all evangelism is, is just sharing your story about the goodness of God, what he's done for you. Like, and so then, after you evangelize, then you want to teach them. The scripture tells us to go and um, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we want to teach them who is the Father, who is the Son, who is the Holy Spirit, and what important role they play in your life as a new Christian. And so then it says, um, all the things that God has, has, all the things that we have observed of God, and we're observing from the 18th verse that he has all power. He has all authority. So no matter what you're going through today, he can resolve it today and make for a better tomorrow. And then the last is to worship. So after you have shared your testimony, you know the goodness of God, you know who the Father is, who the Son Jesus Christ is, who the Holy Spirit is, it won't do nothing but promote you and go into to go into worship. You'll have to say, Lord, thank you for all that you've done. That's just a little praise. But then after you do that, you think about, wow, he's done this because of who he is, because he's the creator of the earth, because he makes things go and sink. The moon doesn't go out of sea, but the waves of the waves of the sea obey that. We don't our bodies are in sync, our heart beats on a rhythm. And our blood pumps on a rhythm. So everything goes in sync. And so that leads us into worship, to praise him for who he is. Not just for what he's done, but to praise him for who he is. Bless your name, Lord. Our program says we're still in the book of Matthew, but based on the text 
message uh, we got this week from our own pastor, we are in Romans. Yes, we, are. we are studying out of book of Romans. Amen? Yes. We are studying out of the book of Romans. So we would love for everyone to join in and stream so you can listen in, you can see it. Amen? Um, the other thing, all of our services that we do, whether it's Sunday school, whether it's church service, are streamed on free media and social media outlets. We're on Facebook, we're on free conference, we're on YouTube. Look, if there was anything else, we'd probably be on that too. Amen. We're trying to get the word of God out. We're trying to get disciples into the house of God. Amen. So if you miss coming to church, remember, you can check us out on Facebook, free conference, and YouTube. Amen. Amen. Once again, we want to thank everybody for all their donations. All the donations that you helped with it, that you gone for this ministry. Like Pastor said, when we were stuck in home in COVID, our donations helped pay for the cameras, yeah, yeah, yeah. pay for all these little media outlets that we're on, and they bless the church. Amen. It helps our food ministry. Amen. It helps us buy the Sunday school books. Amen. Yes, yes. It helps us give pastors. Yes. That's what you got no job. This pastor on the job. Amen.
Amen. I want to thank God for Sister Evangelist, as uh, Evangelist Junior called her, Sister Evangelist uh, Sherlock the poor teacher, bringing such fire uh, to the announcements. Amen. I was excited. Uh, can you do some more announcements? That's what you want to do. Amen. Praise God. It's just good to see some new things happening in ministry. And God is so awesome. So I'm excited about all the things that God is doing and all that he's going to do. Uh, he's put us in a place where we can grow. And I believe we are doing just that from where I'm standing right now. God is awesome. And I, I would like to take some victory laps. If I could run like I used to. Somebody want to run around the church for me? Amen. Amen. If somebody wants to take a victory lap for me, please run around the church. I want some people to knock some stuff over because God is awesome. God is so awesome. Good to have uh, one of our friends, daughters in the house today. Amen. Uh, give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's what I said. Janae. Yeah, Janae is in the house today. Janae, stay up and wave to the folks. Just stay up and wave. There you go. Amen. We thank God for Janae. Keep their family in prayer. Uh, they're going through some things, so keep them in prayer. Also, we want to thank God for the homegoing services on yesterday for uh, Brother Dewan Alexander. Uh, the services were beautiful. The family was dressed in. Uh, burgundy and black, they look good. Uh, Dewan was looking good. Sent him, of course, he's already home. We just delivered the body now to the ground because he's already at home. And we thank God for uh, that service. Again, keep the Alexander family lifted up in your prayers because they need you. They really need you. They really do. Before we leave, we want to make sure we pray for Laquana and for Tashara as they depart back to their locations. I believe uh, Laquana's going back to Jamaica and Tashara is going back to the British Columbia Islands. And, well, wherever they're going, they're going to, uh, uh, Laquana's going back to Atlanta and we, we can't disclose Tashara uh, where she's going because they have to kill you. So, because she's in the services. So let's keep the, keep the family in prayer. The brothers and sisters, my brother Isaac is here. Uh, keep everybody in prayer. Any other announcements before we move forward and onward and upward? Can, can you say something real quick? Yes. In, 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 as you guys can understand, I, I am a believer, but uh, she has said something, and I just want to just make sure they understand. Um, because she has said that you don't work. And often, he does work. He works for God. Yeah. And so that pay that even if you felt like it was something, is nothing to the work that God has for each and every last one of us. So there should never be a question about, and I'm not saying anybody's questioning anybody, but I'm a believer because I work for God, and he pays my bills. Um, so anytime you are able to bless your pastor, somebody that God sent to hover over you and to teach you, don't feel like there was any type of, had to be anything that you needed to know about that because you're giving from your heart and not to know where it's going. Because he's giving, he's giving to all of us um, just by even just being here. Because nobody even has an imagination of what a pastor goes through and a person like that. So I just want to just make sure that it's a clear understanding that this is a man sent from God to work for God. So every day you do something, it's for God. And you do work. Work very hard. Late night, early morning, I think Laquan may be looking through our windows last night. Amen. Talking about staying up late. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We do solicit your prayers. We are tired, but God is able. Amen. We want to thank God for our food and dining committee. They have a special treat prepared for us today after we have the heart services. I was on Sister Connie's heart to put together a meal. I, I don't believe she's serving steak and ribs today, but I think it's spaghetti. Hey, I think it's some spaghetti. So somebody will fill us up. And I thank God for all the food and dining committee. God bless you. And then so right after uh, the, the sermon for today, which should probably only be, what, four or five hours? We should be ready to eat then. I know I'll be in here by myself. We're going to go, and if there's nothing else, we're going to go into the Word of God. Okay, well, first lady has something. 
Yeah, just for uh, some of you, or there are uh, some who were not able to make ongoing services yesterday, and the mortuary did give the church family a few programs. I don't know if there are any left. Um, if so, see Sister Edna if you would like to have one.
The King James Version records, whom having not seen, yet ye love, and whom, though now ye see him not, ye believe and ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And just for a short while, we want to uh, use this stopped, speechless. Amen. Somebody say speechless. speechless. Amen. When you love someone and you thought they loved you, but yet they begin to hurt your heart, you're speechless. When parents do things for their children and their children take it for granted as if they are owed something, we're speechless. When we go to the doctors and they give us a bad report, and we can't understand where this thing, where it came from, how it affected us, we're speechless. When you work for an employer for so many years and all of a sudden they let you go due to whatever reason they want to give, you're less speechless. When you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you think they love you, but yet you find yourselves in a compromising position because you hear through the grapevine, through social media, that they have cheated on you. It leaves you speechless. All right. When you lose a loved one, then you can't explain how, and you think that their timing has not yet come, you think it was too soon, it leaves you speechless. When you go through trials and storms of life that come out of nowhere, and that's how a storm rolls, a storm does not come and knock on the door and announce itself, saying, I'm getting ready to come. But a storm will come at uh, times that you're not prepared, and it will leave you speechless. There are some things that we go through in life that will tug at our hearts and pull us at the very core of our fabric that will leave us speechless. When you have a vehicle and you think it's working perfectly, but you get caught on the side of the road because it suddenly decides to stop in traffic that's flying at 80 miles an hour, it leaves you speechless. It's kind of ironic how when we go through things, we can see how evident it is in our lives and how speechless it will leave us. And we can see it, it's so readily apparent but how come we can't see the things that we do to God that leave him speechless? Yeah. When we wake up in the morning, when God wakes us up in the morning, and we never even say thank you, God is left speechless. When he begins to bless us and pour out his blessings upon us, we never even have an attitude of gratitude. God is left speechless. When God blesses us above measure, when he gives us the very things, the very desires of our heart, and we never appreciate God, he's left speechless. When God would send his son to die on the cross for our sins because he loves us that much, and we would don't even take the time to accept the love that he gives us, God is left speechless. When God pours out his love upon us, wanting and desiring to have a relationship with us, and we never even take the time to enter into covenant with him, God is left speechless. I've given so much. Why won't my people come to me? God is standing with open arms, waiting for us to come. He wants us to be in relationship with him. Let's not leave God speechless. If I had to come up with a, a thematic statement or a big idea for this sermon, it would be called, or it would be uh, uh, focusing on the benefits of believing in Jesus will leave us speechless. So when we begin to think about all the things that Jesus has put in place, how God has put some things in place for the body of Christ, when we begin to mention these things, these are some things that will hold us speechless. In context, 1 Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, he writes to God's elect. This is verse 1. Verse 1 says that he's an apostle and he's writing to God's elect, these exiles who are scattered throughout the province of these different places. 
And when I thought about this word being exile, it means that these travelers were going uh, from country to country, from place to place because of persecution. They were exiles. They understood that where they were was not their home. And so they kept traveling. And instead of being stragglers wanting to stay, they became soldiers wanting to travel. And what that spoke to my spirit is we need to make sure that while we are, while we are on earth, that our picture is toward heaven. Because this is not our home. This world is not our home. We should be striving to get home. This is just a laying ground. God is using us, preparing us to, to lead others to him, but he's coming back to take us home. And I thought about persecution because that's what made the church uh, go to different cities and different countries. Could it be that the persecution we face today is designed by God to push us to places we would never go on our own because he's trying to promote his word and he needs people to do it. God could have chosen any other way to get his word across, but he wants to partner with us. Think about it. The, the one who created the heavens wants to partner with us. The one who formed the stars in the sky wants to partner with us. The one who created the universe wants to partner with us. That should leave us speechless, knowing our creator wants to partner with us. As we look at verse 2, we find here that Peter, the apostle Peter, is now beginning to, uh, it says, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ, and sprinkling with his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Foreknowledge. Now, if we just think about foreknowledge, that's enough to make us speechless. So when we talk about foreknowledge, God's foreknowledge, it's more than just a, a, an advanced knowledge of something that happens before. God, in his infinite wisdom, knows who is going to accept him. And even though he knows who's going to accept him, he then backs up time and gives us the opportunity to choose him and select him. And based on that, he has the foreknowledge and predetermines that we are going to be saved because he knew it from the beginning of time. That leaves us speechless. See, the, uh, the way to explain it best, which still leaves us speechless, is God is in the beginning and God is in the end. And that means at every point in the middle, God knows it. So God knows the end from the beginning. He knows who's going to accept him, who's not going to accept him. So he fast forwards things to the end, knowing that those of us who have accepted him are going to accept him. Then he reminds things back, gives us the choice to accept him, knowing that we are going to accept him or not going to accept him. And then he predeposes that you're going to accept him or not, and it's considered done. You're either going to be in heaven or not. And he already knew it. Leaves us speechless. Verse 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his mercy, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Here we see that we are to praise God because he has given us something of great value. We are to praise him because he has extended to us great mercy. He has given us new birth, not to a dead hope, but into a living hope. And through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. When we think about Jesus Christ being resurrected from the dead, that leaves us speechless. Because if you think about all that Jesus went through, how he was tortured, how he came to the earth, first of all, to give his life a ransom for many. And when he came to the earth, uh, the earth rejected him. And so he walked the dusty streets of Jerusalem. But he didn't preach his own gospel. He preached what his father said because he didn't promote his own agenda. And then he lived the life that God told him to live. 
because he was doing God's will. They took him after he had been uh, mocked. They took him after he had been uh, found guilty. Uh, the record is they, they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Uh, after they took him out of the garden, he went through six different trials within a 24-hour period. He loved us that much. It should leave us speechless. <clears throat> after he had done all that, they took him, falsely accused him. They beat him. They flogged him. They scourged him. They took this thing that's supposed to be called the Cat of Nine Tails, which this is a whip that had glass tied on it and tar on top of the glass, and they drug the tar through the dirt and sand, and they beat Jesus with this to peel the flesh off of his bones. Should leave us speechless. They took his body, put it on the cross, put nails through his hands and a spike through his feet. It should leave us speechless. They hung him up for a spectacle for the world to see. They mocked him. They criticized him. It should leave us speechless because he never said a mountain word. He was speechless so that we could talk. He was speechless so that we would have a voice. He was speechless so that we could tell his story. After he had given up the ghost, they took him down from the cross, put him in a borrowed tomb, and it was borrowed because he didn't plan on keeping it. They recorded it, they put him in the ground on a Friday, on Thursday evening, and he stayed in the grave a portion of three days. Thursday, that Friday, Thursday, Saturday, and the record is early Sunday morning. Jesus got up with all power in his hands. After having gone through all of that and being able to get up, that should leave us speechless. God did all of that because he loved us so much so. Verse 4, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, this inheritance is kept in heaven for you. That should leave us speechless because when we begin uh, when we've been given an inheritance, not only is our inheritance been given to us, but it's an inheritance that can never perish because it's been reserved for us in heaven. So if God is keeping it for us, it will never perish, spoil, or fade. That should leave us speechless. Verse 5, who through the faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. When we operate by faith, we are shielded by God's power. Now this verse speaks of salvation, and that salvation is at least, is at least uh, three multiple, it's at least uh, triple faceted. This salvation that God gave us is triple faceted. Because when we talk about salvation, we are saved, we're being saved, and we shall be saved. When we accept Christ as Savior, He saves our spirits. Our spirit man is saved. That's self. We're saved. We belong to God. But our minds are still carnal. And if presented with the right evidence, if presented with the right temptation, our minds will begin to wander. And so God is still working on our minds. Anybody in the house where God is still working on your mind? Because we haven't got it all right. Amen. If, if we were to look at some of the things we're thinking, even right now, while we're in church, we know some of them thoughts ain't holy. Amen. Amen. Somebody worried about the game, if it was on. Somebody worried about cooking or something, washing the cars. And if God has saved our spirits, our minds are being saved, and our bodies shall yet be saved. I thank God for my brother Dewan, who has accepted Jesus Christ, because we know that... <coughs> When Jesus comes back, remember how Dwan had a had a uh, a disability. How his uh, I think it was his right arm was a little you know he couldn't bend it all the way, and he, he walked with, with with his foot like like this. Remember that? When Jesus comes back, Dwan gets a new body, yeah. a healed body, a whole body, and and we, we I can't even explain it. I can't explain it. But when we accept Jesus Christ, just like Dewan accepted him, 
when we get to heaven, we're going to recognize him. And if the one could come back, he wouldn't want to. Because he's walking around heaven. He's with Jesus. He's with him all. He's resting in his bosom. He is resting. And if we want to be where the one is, we need to make the same decision that the one made. Don't wait until it's too late. We need to give our lives to God right now. Verse 6, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had no suffer, you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. Peter noticed that even though they were being persecuted, they still rejoiced greatly. And I've just come to tell the house this morning that suffering persecution for the sake of Christ should make us better, not bitter. When we suffer for the sake of Christ, it should make us better and not bitter. So many of us, we don't want to go through suffering because it's not comfortable. I, I'll admit, I don't want to go through suffering. And we must then differentiate the suffering that we go through because we put ourselves through it. That's one kind of suffering. But the suffering the scripture is mentioning is the suffering we go through as a direct result of being with Christ, trying to serve him trying to promote his kingdom, trying to preach his word. That's the kind of suffering he's talking about. And when we suffer greatly, God says our reward will be great. When we go through suffering, we want God to remove us from the suffering. But God can protect us not only from the suffering, he can protect us in the suffering. So be, be patient and trust God that no matter where you are, he's got your back. Verse 7. These have come to the proven genuineness of your faith. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perisheth, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So in this verse, Peter is explaining to the audience why persecution comes. He's telling them why persecution has come, why it comes. In our, do you want to know why persecution comes? Persecution comes to prove or to test our faith. Sometimes persecution comes to test our faith. Real faith is not faith until it's tested. We can say we have faith, but until we are put into the trials of fire, we don't really know we have faith. But when your faith is tried, then you can say you have faith because you weathered the storm. Yeah. We can't claim, oh, I have faith if we've never gone through anything. Yeah, okay. We need to understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you want your faith to be increased, to be able to handle all the weight that you have to handle, begin to, to, to focus and to hear the word of God. It's good that we read the word of God. But we need to hear it also because hearing produces faith and faith when it's built up it produces strength so we need to be able to hear the word of God so that we can act on the word of God when we have faith we'll be able to stand on things that are not and they will become and what we call them to be because of faith when we step out on faith we may step out on nothing but by faith we'll land on something many of us don't want to move until we can see everything we don't want to act until we can see everything's lined up. We don't want to do anything unless we have the whole picture painted. But God says, just take the first step. Walk by faith and not by what you can see. God is showing me and teaching me and training me that I need to let go of my physical sight. I mean, I mean, now you please hear me. Well, I'm not talking about I'm going to lie. But he's saying we need to let go of what we see physically and rely more on what we see spiritually. Because physically, we can only see so far. But spiritually, we can see everything. Because we're looking through the eyes of God. God wants us to see spiritually. And when we see spiritually, it will affect our physical vision. Because we have more clarity. So begin to trust God to allow him to open up your spiritual eyes. Amen. Brings us to our text. Verse 8. And we're, we're, about, we're almost done. We're done here. Verse 8 says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and you are filled with an inexpressible, glorious joy. 
or you are filled with joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. This verse goes on to say that Peter's audience has not seen Jesus. Uh, these persecuted believers who he is speaking to, they have not physically seen Jesus. And currently, we have not seen Jesus. We haven't seen him physically. But just because we have not seen Jesus physically does not mean we not, we're not able to make him visible to the world. Yeah. Just because we haven't seen him physically does not mean we should not make him visible to the world. But also, how do we make him visible to the world if we haven't seen him? When we begin to take on his character, yeah. when we begin to take on his lifestyle, when we begin to live the life that he died for us to have, that's how we show the world that we become what he has called us to be. And when we do all of those things, it will leave us and the world speechless. I'll, I'll leave the house with this. When we grow and mature in Christ and get to the point in the knowledge of understanding that all that God has done for us, he did it. And it should leave us speechless. And even though it leaves us speechless, it should give us enough confidence to have the voice to be his mouthpiece, to be his hands and his feet. God could have done anything uh, to get his word across, but he wants to use all of us. The creator of the universe wants to partner with us to get his word across to those who don't know him. He can't speak physically, but we should be able to carry his voice and be his voice, be his hands, be his feet. And that way the world will know that the body of Christ is not speechless. Because we're speaking what God told us to speak. Not only in conversation, but in how we live our lives. The best testimony we will ever have is the one that we live with our lives. Uh, as we, as uh, Sister Shalana pointed out this morning, Sunday school lesson was talking about uh, hearing and doing. It's good that we hear the word of God. That's a great starting point. But it's, it's not complete by hearing it only. We have to hear God's word and then let it filter our hearts and operate in action. And that way the body of Christ speaks for God on his behalf. Speechless. Yes. God 
is so good, he just accepts us back with open arms. So we thank God for his mercy. We thank him for his grace.
touch, to heal, to reveal, to conceal, to protect. Lord, we declare that you are our God. You are our God, our Lord and our Savior. And Lord, you can do all things but fail. So touch right now, Master. Touch your people. Grant them their desires that they might glorify you. Just, I'm just 
I'm just overwhelmed. Jesus. 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 Make sure you get information needed so that we can set up the dedication ceremony. Wow. God has a way of leaving people speechless. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I just also wanted you all to pray for Tashara. She's not here, but she fell downstairs this morning. So she hit her elbow, she hit her head, she broke a nail. And her hip had a little knot on the side, so I'm hoping when we get back, she'll be okay because she got to leave in the morning. So just keep her in prayer. She's one of those ones, I'm okay, I'm okay, but keep her in prayer. It was like the last four or five stairs, she had slipped, slipped, and she hit her head and stuff. So just keep her in prayer that she's okay and she can make it back safe. God is just miraculous. He's wonderful. Uh, we're going to move quickly, so uh, we're going to prepare for our offering and benediction statements, and then we're going to bless the food. And then again, if you needed to pray with us individually, uh, First Lady and I will stay, and everyone else, please go and enjoy uh, the food that has been prepared. Please stay and dine and fellowship with us. Uh, First Lady and I will remain in uh, in the sanctuary, and all the ministers would like to stay. And if you need special prayer and individually, come, please make your way this way. So if, uh, if you're prepared to give here at God's Will Christian Fellowship, we believe in presenting back to God what he has required of us. It says in his word that we are to present back to him just 10%. That, that's a tithe. A tithe is 10% of what we make. We give it back to God. And if we want to give God more than that, that's called an offering. So whatever we give God that's above the 10% is an offering. And if, if God has been good to you, like he's been good to me, I definitely want to give him what he's required and then some. Amen. So if you're prepared to give or need an envelope, just raise your hand and one will be provided to you. We ask that if you're a first time guest, that you do place your name on an envelope so that we can uh, have your information. Amen. So if you're prepared to give, uh, there's not too many of us. Just bring your offering on forward for that. Just bring your offering. If you need pens, there are pens in the pews. Uh, if you want to catch, thank God for your for cash app. Uh, God has made things. Thank God for technology. You can cash app your tithes. We accept uh, credit cards as well. So if you want to cash app, uh, you can send it to uh, cash app hashtag is a. Uh, it's hashtag GWCF Denver 1, I think it is. It's uh, GWCF Ministries. Ministries, okay. And what's the cash tag? It doesn't have a cash tag. Oh, okay. GWCF Denver and all caps. All caps. Or what Brother Isaac said. Either way, it'll get to the ministry. So thank you so much for every gift. If you're prepared to give, just bring your offering on forward. Bring your offering on forward. And we couldn't have my brother John in the house this morning. Uh, no. It's the back. It's the back. It's the back. Good to have brother Michael. Brother Michael's in the house. I need you, brother Michael. Yeah, brother Michael in the house.
And we haven't told you about it yet. Would you bless the food? Lord Jesus, thank you for this meal. We are ready to partake. Let it be a blessing and nourishment for our body. Yes. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Rand and Dee. Anyone would, would like to read the benediction statements this morning before we depart? Do we have a ticket or anybody want to read? Leave us in the reading of the benediction statements. Oh, Evangelist Gina is coming to read the statements. I am so, I'm on fire. All these youth are joining our ministry. We need to hurry up and put them to work. Amen. 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 Uh, Tab, help me get in here. Get these youth to work. So, uh, we're going to get our young out of the party up and running. Grace man. And just a quick announcement before I read that. Um, for the singles ministry, we're looking at doing not this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday to be here. I just have to clear with Pastor and um, Brother Fred to make sure that we can be here to have a fellowship and game night. So that's what we're planning. And of course, everyone is welcome. So even if you're not a single, you are welcome to join us. Amen. All right. If you'll stand so we can read the benediction. And then just repeat after me. The safest place to be in the center of God's will. The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. I will do God's will. I will do God's will. God promises blessings for doing his will. God promises blessings for doing his will. Blessings will overtake me when I do God's will. Blessings will overtake me when I do God's will. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed when I come in. I am blessed when I come in. I am blessed when I go out. I am blessed when I go out. I am the head and not the tail. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am above only and not beneath. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I am healed spiritually. I am healed spiritually. I am healed physically. I am healed physically. I am healed financially. I am healed financially. I am healed mentally. I am healed mentally. I am healed emotionally. I am healed emotionally. I believe God. I believe God. I am saved. I am saved. I am a child of the Most High God. I am a child of the Most High God. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I am blessed. 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 The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. The safest place to be is in the center of God's will. I will do God's will. I will do God's will.